the, 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 sh the, sh the sheer endurance, <laughs> you know, of, of getting through rehearsals in a tour, you know, um, you know, something like most vac like most vacation had some really. It was really it was it was, it was really crazy when, um, like with most vacation, it was uh, one of the first kind of new things that he gave me to learn on on the bass. You know, it was as a bass and drums duet when when he gave it to us and. Um, uh, we, you know, we worked it up, and I learned it, and you know, got it, you know, kind of eighty percent under control during some rehearsals, but then it never got uh, incorporated as part of the show, you know. And so, you know, we we'd start touring, we'd have a different show, and you know, I don't know if Frank thought you know, I was sitting around practicing Mo's vacation every day <laughs> during the tour, but I wasn't. And so he'd like a couple of months into the tour, he'd get. He'd get in some funny mood one night, and he'd turn around in, in the, on an encore or something and say, Hey, he plays Mo's Vacation! And go, Oh, no! Oh, God, how does it go? You know, and you don't have the music or anything. You're supposed to play it from memory and try not to completely screw it up. That would that would be a little harrowing. And you had, oh, like, you had to be also a multi-instrumentalist. I saw one um, TV show from... 1980 band, the summer band, mm -hmm. where you play, play uh, some keyboards. And, uh -huh. uh, sang falsetto. <laughs> so and a few the stunt story vocals. About this singing falsetto. Singing falsetto. In Frank's band, because finally, you were the bass player. Um, well, I mean, I also played some keyboards, and Frank liked that. He uh, he liked the, the versatility of the sound. You know, he he liked having two keyboards. And I guess it came from when he had, like I said, the stripped down band, you know, just the three of us in the back row, and then I can Ray and Frank in the front. And by me being able to double on some keyboards, expanded the sound a little bit, you know. Um, you know, I also actually played guitar on some things, some things that actually that I didn't get credit for. Maybe this is my opportunity to set the record straight here. Uh, I'll have you know that on Joe's Garage, the title song, Joe's Garage, the famous lick of Joe's Garage, you know, the guests only get one chance in life to play a song that goes like, that guitar lick was actually played by me and Warren Cucarolo in, in the studio to, together simultaneously on guitar. It's like two guitars played together on one track. And so I'm actually playing the stupid lick. So I'm proud to say that. Well, uh, in, when I'm talking about in the studio on the album when we recorded it for the record. Uh, well, Joe's Garage, we no, we cut it in the studio just right, just right down the street here. Actually, Village Recorders is only ten minutes away from here. Well, he has an overdub. I mean, we cut the basic tracks first, so I'm playing bass on it too. We cut the you know the bass and the drums and uh, and. A, piano and, and rhythm guitar, I think, as the basic tracks, and then as Frank was overdubbing stuff, I, I was down at the studio for something, and it was time to do that, and I got to the end of it. That song was, uh, you know, we were all sitting around talking about our garage bands, and I think that, you know, I think I, I think I'm talked about playing in the garage, you know, and... Uh, and I mean, we all did, I think, but, you know, we also happened to have a Dodge, you know, and so I, whenever I hear that song, actually, after Frank died, I was, I put that album on, because it was the first album I ever played on with Frank Zappa. It's the first real album I ever played on with anybody, you know, and uh, and it's all about being a musician, you know, the whole the whole story of it is like my life story or something, almost, you know, or, you know, a lot of people's lives that are people that are attempting to be musicians, like your friend, are attempting to be musicians. Just like how you like get kicked around and eat shit and all this miserable stuff happens to you, and um, so God, I heard that song and I just you know after Frank died and I just heard the part that guess you only get one chance in life to play a song that goes like yeah. What? Anyway, yeah, and also and also while I'm setting the record straight, there was one other one that I think that I forgot to get credit for. Um, are you, 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 you? This is this is a little on the obscure side, but I think it's on. I think it's on one of the. You can't do that on stage anymore. Um, there's a version of "Take Your Clothes Off When You Dance" uh, that was from the live in New York sessions when uh, Patrick O'Hearn came down and joined us. And uh, we had some songs we did with two basses and some songs I played guitar on. And there's an instrumental version of "Take Your Clothes Off When You Dance," and the melody is played on an acoustic guitar 
by me. Yeah. And if you'll notice, if you go and listen to that, the, the very end of the song, the very last note, when it goes, there will come a time when you can even take your clothes off when you dance, right on that, where, where there would be the word dance, or that note in the instrumental version, Frank edits to some, I forget, some noise or something, you know, da 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 and uh, and and I think the the reason is, is I'll, I'll never forget this. I broke the string on that note, the last note of the song. I was playing away so long, I broke the fucking string on that last note. <laughs> In New York. Uh, so yeah, and I didn't get credit for that either on the record. You know, they they missed they missed a few things. I also think I I don't think I got credit for uh, while I'm at it. For um, I played also some guitar uh, on uh, like the radio is broken. I had some key and a bunch of and some keyboard on a few things on uh, on a few a couple songs on uh, that album, uh, Man from Utopia. No, I, don't, I think I if I, recall, I think I recall there missed a few credits there too. Well, yeah. Of course, that was one of uh, the fans' least favorite albums, I guess. But, uh. Where does your nickname? Oh, that's uh, that was a childhood nickname that uh, somehow I I acquired when I was a little kid. There's, the there's a whole story behind that too. You want to hear? It? Yeah. <laughs> there's a story behind the re the reason that that ended up being uh, knowledge to Frank. There's and it's tied to the song "Teenage Wind." It turns out that I went to high school with this guy named Christopher Cross who wrote uh, uh, "Ride Like the Wind." You know, he usually won like five Grammy. He's usually you know sailing this guy. Anyway, I was on my way to a Frank Zappa rehearsal one day, and I turned on the radio, and I knew that this guy that I'd gone to high school with um, had got a record deal, and uh, and I heard Ride Like the Wind, and I got to rehearsal, and I said, God, I can't believe it, this guy I went to high school with has a record deal, and I heard, I recognized his voice, and it's this, this cheesy song, and it goes like this, and I played it the best I could remember, sat down at the World Sir Piano, and kind of played what I could just remember from hearing it once in the car for Frank, you know, Ride Like the Wind. And Frank says, oh, give me a pencil and paper. I'll, I'll write a song like that in five minutes. And he sat down and wrote all the lyrics to Teenage Wind. It got to be free. Free is the wind. Free is the way. You got to be our parents that love us. Our teachers, they sing. So anyway, so I, I wasn't really in touch with, with Christopher Cross. I was never particularly great friends with him. But I, uh, uh, I had a, a friend of a friend. It was a drummer who used to play in his band in high school. It was this, this my friend that you know, lives out here. And, uh, and I went and told my friend... Uh, I said, God, you know, Frank. Frank wrote a song making fun of he, Frank wrote a song making fun of Chris's song, and so my friend went and told Chris that Zappa had written a song that was a parody of his song. And Chris says to my friend, he says, Oh, oh, I hope he doesn't release it while I'm peeking. <laughs> 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 and so, of course, you know, my friend told me, of course, I told Frank, you know, what what he said. And uh, and Frank says, "Oh my God, I've been in the business 15 minutes, and I'm peaking." <laughs> <laughs> and so that's where the whole "I'm peaking, I'm peaking." Remember that shit in Teenage Wind that Frank, Frank starts doing? Oh, I'm peaking. That's where that yeah. came from. So anyway, then after that, Frank was in a fancy restaurant in New York somewhere and saw Christopher Cross a couple of years later sitting at a different table, and and talked to him. And then Chris then told Frank that my nickname was Tink when I was a little kid. <laughs> And so Frank, of course, <laughs> thought this was greatly amusing, <laughs> and uh, ended up uh, naming that song after me. Uh, could you explain the bass uh, thing in Team Walk Amok? Yeah, well, it's actually, that's that's an interesting story. It's sort of tied to the same era because that part of that, the first part of Tink's Walks Amok was something that was originally called Atomic Paganini. It's just that weird lick that uh, lick in. Uh, what is it in 13 or 11 or something, whatever it is, I can't remember, um, that goes on for a while. And then it goes, at one point, then it breaks into um, part of a song that we used to call 13. Now, there is a track called 13, which is on um, one of the, I, I don't know, one of the Shut Up and Play Guitar albums, I guess. Oh, you got it. Is it on? Okay, okay. That, that's well, th and that's that song is just like that's just the thirteen vamp. The dun 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 dun. 